Hello everybody, so I've just come outside, I'm going to try the uh, ELM 327 um, Like I said, incredibly cheap, but it does work, I have already tried it um, But I'm just going to demonstrate it to you now, I wanted to try it first because um, Well, with these cheapy things from China, especially these um, Bluetooth OBD2 interface things uh, I've read on quite a few forums and they are quite prone to being faulty So uh, I thought I'd try it first Anyway, um, my car is uh, pretty new. Uh, it's a diesel, 2013. Uh, it doesn't have any error codes or anything on the dash, as you can see. It's, I need some fuel, and that's about it, really. Um, so, yeah, it, there's nothing on this one interesting. However, I have a car over there. You can see that one, that old Jag. Uh, it's got an engine light. It's got a faulty sensor, and um, I'm going to check out that car and uh, see what information we can get, see if we can clear the engine light, see if this thing actually does work. Um, the app I'm going to be using with it is Talk for Android, and um, yeah, so let's start. First of all, by the way, if you have any Bluetooth device in your car, like uh, a radio that does Bluetooth audio or um, a Bluetooth hands-free kit for your phone, like I do, built into the centre console of my car, um, it interferes with this like quite often and makes it disconnect so I find the best thing to do is because periodically I think the what happens is the head unit tries to connect to the phone periodically and because this is connected to the phone it disconnects the phone from the uh, Bluetooth adapter so what I'm going to do just before this um, is I'm going to go to phone as you can see my phone is uh, connected and I'm going to go to setup and I'm just going to remove it from Bluetooth settings so um, I go to paired device list and I'm just going to, here's my phone here, uh, Galaxy S4 I'm just going to actually remove that after it uh, connects again uh, let's just select that one click delete and uh, yeah that's it so I've deleted off the list so now it shouldn't connect or disconnect from the car so I thought that was just something for us to bear in mind that yeah it does cause quite a lot of interference I had a lot of problems with this thing when um, I first plugged into this car and I couldn't work out why it worked perfectly on the old Jag but it didn't work that well on my car considering it was a newer car I just thought it was quite weird and um, I had an idea that it might be something to do with the Bluetooth on here uh, I deleted it from the pairing list and yeah it doesn't disconnect now so yeah that was the error so here's how to do it first of all you need to find your OBD2 port uh, mine is in the fuse box here so I've already taken the panel off the front of the fuse box because it's a pain in the ass to get off and I'm just going to uh, plug it in so it just goes in like that, you need to make sure you plug it in the right way up mine goes in this way when you plug it in it'll light up uh, make sure you have the engine on as well by the way uh, that really does help um, these things, it does read data from the engine but it doesn't read a lot unless you have the engine actually turned on and um, you do need the car, the key to be on um, either to turn the electrics on or to have the engine on. But yeah, having the engine on releases all the sensors for you to read from because obviously a lot of the sensors are to do with RPM and um, fuel, air mixture, air temperatures, things like that uh, that you're going to need um, to read from this thing. So now once the red light's on it means it's connected. So I've already set up Talk. Now what you're going to have to do is um, I'm going to open Talk Talk's incredibly cheap though, it's only about 20 quid, so I do recommend everybody buys a copy of this. It's really great. Now you do have different, as you can see, mine is actually connecting up here, so that means GPS, the phone's Bluetooth's on, uh, the connector is connected, and then the car symbol means it's connected to the car's ECU. And you can tell because you see those two lights and they're flashing really quick, I'm not sure whether the camera will pick it up or not, but um, yeah, those two lights, there's an amber, uh, a red light which means it's got power, an amber light and the green light and I think the green light is Bluetooth the amber light is the car's ECU data so um, yeah if those lights are flashing it means that the car is uh, connected um, and the ECU is reading data to the Bluetooth so here it is as you can see nothing different however you might be able to see if I just zoom in a little bit uh, that the uh, you can see in the top right hand corner there, there's a phone, so the revs, it's idling at about 700. If I rev the engine, you can see that the two, um, the two needles synchronise with each other almost. And uh, you get a very smooth readout 
Um, that takes a little bit of tuning, by the way, to get that smooth read out. Otherwise, it can be a little bit jerky. The best thing to do is to do this. If you go to options here and go to settings, and uh, go to OBD2 adapter settings, and select faster communication. Oh, not all of these adapters may um, may support that, but the one I have does support it. So yeah, if you just select that, it, it allows the uh, needle to move much more responsively. So yeah, if I just demonstrate that again. Um, I don't know, let me just zoom in. There you go, so you do get that. So if you can see, if I try and keep the revs at about 1500, with my foot, you'll see that it does stay at about 1500, like so. So yeah, that's that, So uh, and all the time it's uh, transferring data. Uh, this thing's pretty small, uh, I don't know whether I would get the cover for my, um, as you can see, here's the cover for the fuse box, I'm not sure whether I would get that back on afterwards. But uh, yeah, it does actually work, and it works remarkably well. Um, so yeah, when you first set it up, it can be a little bit daunting if you don't understand what to do. So what you need to do first is, you need to pair the uh, Bluetooth adapter with the phone. And um, if I just show you, you just need basically like pairing any Bluetooth device, and the passcode is uh, 1234. Once you've done that, you then need to, uh, it will then disconnect from the Bluetooth, but don't worry. What you need to do is start the Talk app, then um, it should automatically detect that one is paired to the um, phone and try and connect to it. Um, so that's not an issue. However, you'll know that it does because uh, this little symbol here will come on. The uh, little dongle symbol next to the phone. Um, yeah, for, and then what you need to do is you need to create a car profile. So if I just click car profile, you can see i got two. One says uh, X-Type because I have a Jaguar X-Type that I use this with. And one says Fabia, which is my car because I have a Skoda Fabia. So um, you can either edit those two or you can create a new one. And um, if you don't have any profile set up, it'll just have the button to create a new profile. So let's just create one just for the, um, just for the uh, use of this video. So yeah, you can call it whatever you want. So I'm going to call it Test. Um, and whatever the engine size is, 1.6 is in there by default, but you can have whatever you want. So let's say I got a 2 litre, 2.0, and then um, the total weight of the vehicle, which you don't have, really have to know. Uh, I didn't put that in, it doesn't matter. Yeah, then the type of fuel, so let's say I've got a diesel, um, and the fuel tank capacity, which you don't really need to know either. Um, I'm not sure how many people will. You can look it up online, I suppose. I didn't put mine in. And then set the maximum uh, RPM on the dial. Now mine goes to 6,000 in my car, so let's set that to 6,000. Um, depending on what size engine you have, you may have a different setting on there. Um, I know that Jaguar over there has 9,000, whereas my car only has six. So yeah, uh, then you can go all the way down here. I didn't change any of these settings here, uh, like fuel cost and uh, volumetric efficiency and uh, MPG trim adjustment, uh, speed multiplier for, for OBD, um, and a whole bunch of settings you can probably see. You might not be able to make them out too well in the video. However, those are the only settings I changed and it seemed to work fine. Then you can click save, and that's that. So you can see, at the minute I've created a new profile. Uh, what you need to do then, once you've created it, it doesn't always select it automatically, so you need to go to vehicle profile and then select whichever one you want. So I'm gonna select Fabia, because that's the one that I'm using. So as you can see, it says uh, profile's already been loaded. And that's it. So as you can see, it works pretty well. Uh, here's one of the best parts, actually. If you click read time information, it actually shows you a whole ton of information. And it says at the top, connected to ECU OK. And it gives you a ton of info about the car. Um, so if I just show you this, it's got, um, for example, uh, the accelerometer there. So, which won't move, as you can see, the rev is moving at the minute, but the accelerometer isn't. That's because I'm actually sat on my driveway at home. I'm not actually moving. Uh, the throttle, so, um, which also doesn't seem to be moving at the minute, I'm not sure why. Um, I'm guessing it's because I'm not actually driving the car. Uh, the turbo boost at the bottom, which is quite interesting. I don't know whether my car would read that out or not. It is, oh, it is reading out, okay. You can see that, not point. At one times turbo boost in PSI. Uh, I do have a turbo diesel, so that should be reading out. Um, that's. I was going to say, I didn't know whether it would read out or not while I was stood still, but clearly it does. 
readout. I have a turbo diesel, so that's probably why it does that. On a petrol car without a turbo, I'm guessing it isn't going to do that. So yeah, then there's, there's the coolant temperature. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff on here, actually, if you actually just... Oops, trying, kind of hard to film one-handed, but... Um, so yeah, if you try and go through here, you can time a 0 to 60, uh, or 0 to 100 kilometers, um, one eighth of a mile time, one quarter of a mile time, uh, maximum horsepower, um, uh, tip, I'm not sure what that is. Um, but yeah, so then there's a lot of stuff here, emissions readiness, DTC, um, misfire, fuel system, all sorts of stuff on there I don't really understand. I like cars, I'm a, I'm a bit of a petrol head but I'm one of these people, you know, I like cars but I don't understand that much about them, like I wouldn't know how to fix one. So <laughs> I do, uh, you know, I know about car electronics and things, uh, but that's the easy stuff isn't it, you know, I don't know about the actual internal combustion engine itself, you know. So, like most people, I'm guessing. Um, but yeah, a lot of this stuff might be really handy to you if you are someone who is a mechanic or someone who's really into, um, you know, either me amateur mechanics or whether you're a professional mechanic. I'm guessing some of this would be very useful to you. So, fault codes uh, is another option if you click fault codes. You can scan for a fault code. I'm not going to do it on my car because... Um, well, I don't have any fault codes on my car because it doesn't have any problems with it. As I said though, uh, I'm going to try in this Jaguar that's parked next to me which does have a fault code and uh, we're going to watch it turn off the engine light and make sure it works. Okay, so then in the next bit uh, we have a view map so it actually, if you drive around it'll actually show you where you've been um, which is fairly interesting but I'm not going to show you that. Torque scan is, an, is a, another feature which is actually a plugin that you download and that actually shows you all of the um, Informa all the information that the ECU holds on its sensors and uh, some of it doesn't seem to update, I'm not sure why. The green indicates it does have that sensor but it's not reading out any data so maybe that's because I'm not driving, I mean who knows. Like I said, I can't be that helpful in this review in terms of the actual technical stuff because I'm, like I said, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a car expert. Uh, I'm not a mechanic or anything like that, so I don't really understand a lot of this stuff. But yeah, so it says acceleration sensor, and you can see it's all changing as and as and when. Accelerator, pedal position, 14%. Um, if I press the accelerator, you can see it actually goes up to 26, and then back down to 14. I'm sure that actually difference that makes. Obviously, it shows I'm pressing the pedal, but I'm not sure why it's already at 14%. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's it. So the air temperature. 17 degrees um, Yeah, there's a whole ton of sensors on here So the ones that aren't in green by the way the ones that your car doesn't have and obviously your car Isn't going to have all these sensors because well, you know, there's a lot of stuff on here and uh, Sorry about the shaky camera work, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff on here and uh, you know I'm guessing it's for every single car You know, that's actually made. I mean they'll all have different sensors and uh, so this is a Skoda which is a Volkswagen so it's, uh, underneath basically so it's probably going to have whatever sensors Volkswagens have and um, yeah so there's test results you can um, it'll query the car's OBD adapter to try and find um, whatever data is being held by the sensors a lot of them have like weird names, like as you can see this is MID dollar sign 31 TID dollar sign 3 CO and that it's okay. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I run this test last time and it actually brings up, um, this phone doesn't go to sleep, um, it actually brings up a ton of stuff eventually, it's only 38% at the moment, uh, but it, like I said it does actually bring up a whole ton of, uh, whole ton of data and uh, two of the sensors say fail on my car, which I'm not sure what that's about, but I'm guessing, there you go, there's a whole ton of sensors that come up and say fail or not okay. I'm not sure why, and I don't think it's causing any harm, I mean the car's brand new and it doesn't have any engine lights on there. Perhaps it's the seatbelt light and stuff, I don't know. Uh, it could be anything, couldn't it, because I don't know, actually know what this means. This is a cool feature though, by the way, graphing. Uh, you can actually get it to create a graph of um, speed or RPM. Um, this is great. I know I've got a friend who wants to borrow this adapter from me. And um, I think he's going to borrow um, my phone or buy a copy of Talk. I'm not sure, either one. Um, to 
test his car, so he's got a diesel tuning box. And I know they say they don't make much of a difference, and a lot of people say that they damage the engine. But he's got one, and he wants to see what difference it's actually making to his car, so he's going to try and go for a drive with it on, and then do the same journey with uh, it off, and see what the difference is on the... Uh, chart so yeah that's quite an interesting feature I suppose that would be good if you're into tuning your engine like I said uh, you can check different stats and here's adapter status which um, if I click it there we go so as you can see a whole bunch of stuff on here um, at this point sometimes it disconnects like I said but um, it was disconnecting from the from the adapter for some reason and I had to unplug and replug in the adapter but the theory I had about that was to do with the Bluetooth hands-free in the car. Since I disabled that, since I unpaired it from that, I've not had any issues with it disconnecting. So that's why I mentioned at the beginning that if you have any disconnecting issues, you should probably disconnect your Bluetooth hands-free in the car just temporarily. So, as we can see, uh, there's a whole ton of stuff. So, connection to the adapter and uh, connection OBD2. As you can see, this is obviously a fake adapter because it gives the MAC address of AABBCC112233, which is obviously not a real MAC address. So yeah, it's this is obviously a fake adapter. I mean, I wasn't expecting it to be a real one because I paid three pounds fifty for it for from uh, AliExpress. So yeah, you can probably guess that's why it's got a fake MAC address. It's probably it, it's obviously not a real adapter. However, it does function perfectly for what I want to use it for. So adapter error count, which um, should stay on zero. Uh, and if you don't, it says you might have a faulty adapter. As you can see, mine has stayed in zero, so clearly I don't have a faulty adapter, which is good. Uh, and the adapter manufacturer is OBD2 to RS232 interpreter. Hmm, yeah, not sure about that. And uh, the version is ELM3271.5. Adapter notes. And it just warns that it might be a cheap fake adapter, which is, I know that anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then you can... Uh, use the enhanced MPG calculation. I've selected it for faster communication already. Uh, if you don't go into the settings and select the adapter for faster communication, um, this little section comes up with a little red X and says uh, fail. Uh, the reason for that is, like I said, um, the, the adapter does support faster communication, um, but for some reason by default in the talk app, it's actually turned off. So if you do turn it on, then you get that okay symbol there. Uh, and that's nice because once you turn it on you do get the nice smooth um, uh, rev counter and stuff so uh, and you get much nicer more responsive values that seem to uh, be more accurate and here we go available sensors um, now this is all the sensors that my ECU supports and it says uh, there's a whole ton of them you can see there's trouble codes Calculated engine load value, coolant temperature, intake manifold, engine RPM, vehicle speed, intake air pressure, throttle position, oxygen sensors. Oh god, there's a whole ton of them. I'm not going to read them all out because there's far too many. Uh, but yes, and then there's the application version, which is the application, the Talk Apps version. And that's that. So yeah. So yeah, sometimes after you go onto the adapter status page, it does disconnect randomly. But it seems to happen less when I have. Uh, the Bluetooth hands three um, unpaired from the phone. So, yeah. So that's Talk app and the ELM adapter. Now, obviously, there's a lot of other stuff in here. The trouble codes is, I'm guessing the trouble codes is going to be the one that people are more interested in, because um, I mean that's the huge feature of it. It can remove the uh, engine light from your car, and if you get a mechanic to come and do this for you, or you take it to a garage and get a mechanic. Cost, uh, it can cost a lot of money because just to get them to hook up the computer to the car um, literally can cost around £50 uh, whereas this adapter costs £3.20 and an existing Android phone. That's that, so I'm going to try the other car, show you the engine light, see if we can get it to remove. Okay, so here I am uh, in the Jaguar X-Type. This is a 2002 Jaguar X-Type and um, it's at the very one of the very first cars to support the OBD2 protocol. Um, so, yeah, to plug the adapter in, it actually plugs in under the dash here, it's really weird. There's like a little port just here. And as you can see, it just plugs into it. And, um, yeah, so if I just get my phone, which I'm not sure where I've actually put it. It's in my pocket, here it is. So, <laughs> um, where it should be. So, uh, yeah, if I just, first of all, if I just start the engine, 
you'll see that the car has uh, the engine light on. There we go. As you can see, uh, it has the engine light on on this car, and it's on all the time. So there's clearly some malfunction there with the engine. Um, it is a sensor, we think. Uh, we took it to a garage a long time ago uh, over this same item. It's had the engine light on for a while, and he told us not to worry, it's a sensor, but if we were to replace it, it would cost quite a lot of money, and he didn't know whether it was worth doing it on a car that's what, you know, um, 12, 13 years old. Now, I think it's possibly 13, 14 years old, in fact, now, this car. But at the time, it was about it was about 11, 12 years old. And he says, you know, in a car this age, he doesn't know whether it's really that big of a deal to replace it, because there's nothing physically wrong, it's just a sensor. So, here it is, as you can see, and I've got the ODV adapter plugged in. So let's try this. Let's connect the phone. So let's start talk. So here it is. And I'm going to switch profile because I've already set one up for this car. Um, to vehicle profile, X type. And there it is. So X type profile connected. So as you can see, the adapter is connected. It's connecting to the X type's um, ECU. And it is still connecting. It takes a while to connect on this car. Uh, but it is connected to the ECU and it's connected to the adapter. Um, and there you go, it's connected to the ECU. As you can see, um, the revs there, 700, so let's just see. So 2,000 and odd revs. So just under 3,000 there. So yeah, if you keep it at two, for example, this engine's a pretty big engine, so it takes a while, but yeah. So there you go, so as you can see, it's all working fine. If we go to real-time information once again, we'll see there's all kinds of stuff, so there's no inform. oh, no, the throttle does have some information. Um, vacuum, 16.9 coolant. Speed, which again is not currently um, recording because I'm not driving the car. Um, and yeah, the revs. And the accelerometer again is reading. Um, so yeah, same stuff again. As you can see, uh, this one for some reason has some incomplete stuff on it. Yeah, there's a little bit of a different stuff on. I mean, this is a different car. First of all, it's pretty old. Second of all, it is a petrol. And thirdly, it's a pretty old. Uh, it's a pretty big engine petrol too. It's it's a two liter V6. So there's going to be a lot of difference. Plus, like I said, it's it's like a 13, 14 year old car now. So there's going to be some difference here. So let's first of all, let's actually just go to talk scan and see what it picks up, just out of interest. And it's picking up all kinds of stuff here. And uh, acceleration sensor, all kinds of stuff. It's not picking anything up as such. Test results. See what comes up. It takes a while to refresh on this car too. That may be to do with the protocol. Uh, I'm not sure what this actually holds uh, in terms of uh, what sort of data the, the car actually carries about itself on the ECU. As I said, it's a pretty old car so there's a good chance it doesn't carry quite as much information as my car does, um, being as it's a lot newer. But there's also a chance it carries some information that my car doesn't, because my car is a diesel engine, and it's also a much smaller engine, it's only a 1.6 diesel. This is a 2 litre petrol, and it's, like I said, it's about 10 years old now, so... Well, actually, it's more than 10 years old, as I said, it's about 13 or 14 years old. So that's, you know, part of the reason. Um, so yeah, it's scanning 3%, and it's found all kinds of stuff. Um, for some reason, even though it's got two faulty sensors, it shows them all up as okay on here. Um, however, it does bring up some... Uh, interesting stuff on the fault codes because it's got an engine light on as we'll see in a moment anyway this isn't going to bring up anything interesting so let's just quit that um, <laughs> let's go to adapter status again um, interestingly enough you can see the vehicle manufacturer here um, on my car it came up as unknown on this car it actually does recognize that it's a Jaguar so that's quite interesting so the ECU on the car holds information telling it that it's actually a Jaguar whereas in my car it doesn't tell it it's a Skoda, it doesn't tell it it's a VW, it doesn't tell it it's anything. It just comes up as unknown. And this car, however, um, yeah, so the ECU comes up as being made by a Jaguar, has, uh, has been a Jaguar car. So yeah, as you can see, there's a lot less sensors available on this car. 
Um, so yeah, there's uh, trouble codes, fuel system status, um, engine calculator, low value, some of the stuff that I had before, NGM, um, NGM, RPM, uh, MGM's a film company, uh, <laughs> RPM, uh, intake manifold pressure, vehicle speed, time in advance, intake air, pressure, temperature, um, flow rate, all sorts of stuff, so bank one sensor two, oxygen sensor and short term fuel trim, and bank two sensor two, oxygen sensor, short term fuel trim, and um, yeah, so it has a lot less information. A lot less sensors in my car. So here's the interesting bit, here's what you all wanted to see. Um, let's see fault codes. So we know the engine light is on in this car. So let's just click fault codes and click to scan. So there we go, so it's scanned. So we have uh, P0037 powertrain, P0057 powertrain and P1000 powertrain. So you can see heater control circuit low and heater control circuit low bank 1 sensor 2 and bank 2 sensor 2. Now the interesting thing about this is you see all three of these you can click them and for example let's click the top one and it'll say here um, if we can get the camera to focus HO2S heater control circuit low bank 1 sensor 2 and you can look it up on the web and it looks it up on a database for you which is really interesting I'm not sure whether it'll load. Oh, it will. I've got a signal. Okay. So, yeah, as you can see, the trouble code for this vehicle, when the camera uh, focuses, is, um, it says, um, uh, what does it say? Oh, bloody thing's just... Uh, yeah, powertrain, fuel, air, meter in, and um, heater control circuit low, and it says here, um, powertrain, fuel, and air, meter in, and it says um, the cause is wiring, the HO2S heater or the ECM. And I'm not sure what any of those are, but um, I'm guessing it means it's a faulty sensor if it says wiring. Could be that the sensor's gone. The, the mechanic did tell us that the sensor is faulty. So if we look at the second error, this car has three errors. Um, <clears throat> Again, if you look it up, it does come up and say um, on this one, it says... Uh, powertrain again, air, fuel, air, fuel and air meter in, the fuel and air meter in, heated oxygen sensor, bank 2 sensor 2, heat a low voltage, and then again the cause is uh, wiring, um, HO2S heater or ECM. So not sure what that actually means. And then this P1000 powertrain uh, has all kinds of things here. It says motor testing, or oh, comes up as a Ford, but this car is technically a Ford, it's a Ford built Jaguar, so at the time um, it was actually, it has it uses a lot of Ford parts in this car because as I says, uh, it is a, a Ford built Jaguar at the time when Ford was uh, owned by Jaguar. In fact a lot of the parts in the engine and stuff actually say Ford on them. So yeah, if you read this it does say Ford, OBT2 monitor testing incomplete and OBT2 monitor testing not completed, not sure what that means. If you look at it on the web, it comes up with a whole ton of stuff, if I remember rightly. I did check this previously. Um, so yeah, if you look, it says um, powertrain, manufacturer controlled, all sorts of stuff. ECM, drive cycle incomplete, memory erased, ECM, or this powertrain, manufacturer controlled, OBD11, monitor testing not complete. Uh, wiring, VSS center, mechanical fault, ECM. So yeah, all kinds of stuff it comes up with. Now, here's the interesting bit. Let's go ahead and um, go all the way to what everybody's been waiting for. Uh, how do you clear the engine light? And let's watch it happen live. It, it is simply as easy as this. You click the options button on your Android and uh, click clear faults on ECU. It takes a little while. It comes up with some... Uh, comes up with a whole ton of warnings, well not warnings, but information. It says you should only perform this action after the fault has been fixed and when the vehicle is stationary, if the cause of the fault has not been fixed, then the fault code will reappear at a later time or in some cases will not clear at all. No, some vehicles require the engine to not be running before fault codes can be reset. So if it doesn't reset, try, um, just don't start the engine, just plug in the adapter and um, connect to it while the um, uh, and just adapt to, uh, connect to it while the uh, while the electrics are on and the OBD2 adapter is reading from the car 
so don't have the engine on sometimes that helps um, and it says yeah it requires it not to be run for foot cuts and reset uh, other vehicles require you to start the engine immediately after sending the fault clear command. Um, some grey fault codes might only be clearable by the ECU itself after a specific number of trouble free drive cycles have been completed. Some historic green fault codes will also be subject to this. Um, uh, you sure you want to clear the fault log? And uh, yeah, you just click OK. And as you can see, oops, I think I actually clicked back by accident. Yeah, sorry. So clear, clear the ECU, click OK. And as you can see, as soon as I clicked OK, um, the engine light disappeared. And there it is. No engine light, it does disappear. However, and it now says it's completed and the fault log is empty. So if you exit from that and then scan again, it won't find any fault codes. So um, that's it. So the engine is now trouble code free or the engine light has been switched off. Um, however, here's a one caveat with this. It doesn't get rid of the engine light completely in some cars, as you can imagine. Um, as you can see, it's uh, still reading the fault codes here, but yeah, they don't reappear. But as the warning information in Torque actually told us before we cleared it, um, as you can see, it actually does come up with a fault code yet again. The reason for that is because, as it, as it says um, in... Um, the Torque app. I mean, if you haven't fixed it, the sensor is only going to read faulty again and the engine light's going to come back on. So as you can see, there's all kinds of stuff here. So uh, again, the same ones that I had before, which is pending fault, which is powertrain, HO2S heater circuit low, and this HO2S heater circuit low bank 2 sensor 2. As you can see, those two sensors are reading faulty still. And um, if you can't really read because the camera is a little bit blurry. But um, there you go, you can see it now. So that, that that's that's the thing. So even though the engine light isn't on, um, the ECU is still reading that these um, trouble codes have happened because the problem is still there. This car we know has a faulty sensor or a couple of faulty sensors by the looks of things. And for that reason, even if we clear the engine light, as you can see, the engine light isn't on, but it's gonna come back on after I restart the car. So even if I, let's, for example, Let's uh, let's actually go back from here. Okay, as you can see, the engine is still running, and we still get you know everything. I'm not sure whether you can hear this car actually because it's quite quiet for a, such an old car. Um, but yeah, so if I remove that for a second, if I just switch off the engine, okay. As you can see, the torque app is not connected. It's not connected to it at all. Or it is connected to it, but as you can see, it's um, the engine is uh, not reading out any RPM because the engine isn't switched on. So if I, for example, if I disconnect, let's even unplug the adapter, even. Okay. Okay, so the uh, it does disconnect. Hopefully, there you go. It's disconnected. So I plug it back in now. So it doesn't seem to matter what I do. So if I plug this back in, it should connect up to the ECU of the car. <clears throat> it does take a little while on this Jaguar. So, for example, so now I've turned off the car, let's switch it back on. And you will see that when I switch it on, the engine light isn't on, but then it does appear shortly afterwards. So if I switch the car electrics on, switch an engine on, as you can see, the engine light isn't on. But then it will shortly switch on. It does take a little while. It takes quite a few seconds. But the engine light eventually does reappear. And the reason for that is because, well, the sensor is faulty. Um, it will clear the trouble code. But if it is a faulty sensor, then, yeah, the, the code will reappear. Because um, you've not fixed the fault. The sensor is still reading that there is a problem. Oh, the car is still reading. There you go. It's just reappeared. So the reason for that is, as I said, um, that's the one caveat with this device. It's incredibly cheap. It's incredibly handy. And it does everything you want it to. The one problem is, if you clear the trouble codes and you haven't fixed the problem, switch off the car, start it back up again, the engine light will read again because obviously the problem hasn't been fixed. So yeah, it does work. It does clear the trouble codes. Um, however, 
as again we'll clear it again and just prove that it does work but yeah you, you can clear the trouble codes as many times as you want but it will always always come up with an error guaranteed so so there you go it comes up with the same errors again as before um, yeah so three fault codes found if you clear the faults on the ECU um, so if we just uh, as you can see, once you get clear, it does clear the engine light, but um, as I said, this thing, it's only going to reappear after I uh, after I start the car again. And that's all it is to it. I mean, it, that's the way that it works, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, if you, if you go straight back onto fault codes and scan again, it will find, no doubt, another three error codes, because as I said, the error is still there. It hasn't been fixed. All you've done is um, clear the ECU's memory um, of errors. As soon as you clear it, it fills back up again with errors because um, there is a ton of um, um, a ton of problems with this car, you know, with the sensors, and so it'll only, as you can see, again, it's filled back up. So that's the only problem. It does clear the engine light, but it's not going to get rid of it permanently. If there is a problem, it will keep switching on. So again, clear the trouble codes. Doesn't matter how many times you do this, it will always keep filling up the error log again with um, with faults and that's the way that it is unfortunately it does work it does turn off the engine light and you've seen it do it um, perfectly however it's not a long-term solution of course the long-term solution is fixing the problem in the first place um, it's temporary so if you want to switch it off just because it's pissing you off um, then yeah, you can do that. So it's it's incredibly useful and it's a very very good uh, little piece of kit to, to keep for anybody who's techy and, and into cars as well. It's a great piece of kit to buy yourself just to mess around with. However, if you're buying it to clear fault codes and to get rid of your engine malfunction light uh, on your car, then yeah, it isn't going to work if there's still an issue with the car because um, the engine light will keep switching itself back on. As you've seen, I mean. I switch the engine light off, but as soon as I start the car back up, after about 20 seconds of, of uh, the engine being on, um, the ECU reads that there's an error and um, puts on the, the uh, malfunction light again. And the reason for that is because there's a problem. Um, admittedly, yeah, it isn't a problem with the car. The car runs fine. And we've even had this checked out by a, a professional, a proper mechanic, took it to a garage. He looked at it and, and he said exactly the same thing. There's nothing physically wrong with the car. Um, it's just the sensor or a couple of the sensors in the engine are broken if you were to replace those sensors It's a couple of hundred pounds and um, well for a car that's 15 years old or you know 13 14 15 years old however old this car is like I said it was made in 2002 So yeah, I mean it's it's not worth spending that much money on it Another tip by the way if uh, if your car doesn't get rid of engine the engine light for whatever reason um, here's a tip, um, or you can't clear the fault codes for whatever reason the engine light didn't turn off. Um, try this, as it says in the fault code. Switch on the electrics of the car so you can see the, the electrics are on the, the Bluetooth adapter is plugged in and connected to the Torque app. Um, the key is in. All I need to do is uh, turn the key once more and the engine will start. So here's what we do um, if we go to fault codes again. And uh, it's old data, so let's just refresh the data. And it will find the fault codes. Yeah, if your uh, car doesn't get rid of the engine light um, <laughs> for whatever reason uh, and you can't get it to clear, try this. Um, as I said, start the uh, electrics on the car, connect the torque app to the adapter, then clear the fault log. That's what we're going to do. Um, so, yeah, it's going to. There you go. So, as you can see, there's a um, P1000 powertrain multiple descriptions for it so uh, it's a pending fault because the engine is going to be started so yeah if you just clear them that way clear the faults on the ECU okay so it's going to clear them now if you start the engine as you can see the engine light isn't on and it's probably not going to turn on either um, so yeah that's a tip to try um, try clearing the fault, pressing uh, to clear the fault codes and then start the engine afterwards and see if that makes a difference. As you can see, 
um, the engine light isn't going to come on now. So I could go for a drive and the engine light won't turn on. Um, it'll be perfectly fine. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's how it works. And that, guys, is the ELM327 uh, Bluetooth OBD2 adapter. Um, yes, it works. Yes, it gives you a ton of readout. Yes, it uh, is incredibly cheap. As I said, I bought mine for £3.50, although a lot of them on eBay tend to go for... Um, they tend to go for around £6. But yeah, on eBay, mine was only £3... Uh, on uh, AliExpress, sorry. Mine was only £3.50 from China, and it was delivered in, like, a week and a half. So that was pretty good. But, um, yeah, so it's incredibly cheap. And yes, it does clear the engine light, and uh, yes, it does read out a ton of data. Um, however, it doesn't really um, solve any problems. It does temporarily remove the engine light from your uh, dashboard. Um, it does temporarily do that. However, um, if there is a genuine problem with the sensor in the engine or with the engine itself, um, that error is only going to re-emerge after you restart the engine. The reason for that is because the problem is not fixed, the sensor is still reading faulty, or the part of the car that is more malfunctioning is still malfunctioning. And so the ECU will read this and go, ah, I have a problem, and put the engine light on again. So that's why it isn't a permanent solution. However, I can see this being very useful for somebody if you are a, um, an, a mechanic who likes to fix things yourself. Um, you know, you like to fix your own cars, or you're a mechanic who does it on the side, you know, you like to fix cars for friends and, and acquaintances, etc. And they pay you, and it's just a hobby. Um, and, um, you know, you want to be able to replace parts, and then um, clear the engine fault, fault code afterwards so that the engine light goes off for the person you're fixing the car for. And this is great, because, um, well, if you replace the part, and then the engine light's still on, you can clear the, um, you can clear the ECU. No issues at all, um, and then off you go. The engine light shouldn't come back on because, well, you fix the problem. Or another reason this might be useful: um, perhaps you want to see what the problem is before you go to the manufacturer. You know, before you take it to the garage, perhaps you want to check out what the garage has said. You know, perhaps they've told you it's a, a really expensive part. You know, that's going to be really, really expensive to fix. And um, you know, you check on this uh, adapter and you look up the definition of the problem online, and it turns out it's only you know a um, a relatively small problem that can be fixed for, you know, like 20 quid. It could be anything, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is, it has multiple uses, and it is very useful. It's incredibly cheap. I recommend anybody have one of these things just to keep in their toolbox, um, because, as I said, you can check things out for yourself. You can clear trouble codes if you need to. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's a good little accessory for any petrol head, really, if you want to check out your uh, stats on your car live as you're driving. Um, I don't recommend doing that though, I recommend that you actually get your friend to do it while you drive. You need to keep full attention on the road, remember. But yeah, I mean that's, uh, yeah, so it's a pretty cool, cool little device. So as you can see, it does get rid of the engine light in this car, and uh, that's that. So, that's the Bluetooth adapter. Thanks for watching.